Yo, yo. It's Tim Lee Glean. I'm just here right now. Um, it's on this little hiatus right now. I just, just moved to just kind of just record something. Um, I'm be honest, I didn't pray before this or anything. I, mean, I just kind of just, just moved to do this. And I just wanted to turn this camera on and just... I just say something real quick. It's off the rock, Hakadesh. Um, something that I don't know. Uh, first and foremost, I just, I just want to give all glory to our heavenly Father and just praise Him, you know, in this moment, and just, you know, just. I mean, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Um, you know, to be honest with you, you know, it hasn't been easy for me. There's been some trials and some things that I've been experiencing as of late. Um, attempted attacks on my mind by the enemy. And of course, some weapons that were formed against me that <laughs> has prospered. Um, but Yah and his sovereignty and just how he utilized everything, you know, for my good, you know, as it says in Romans 8, 28. And I've been very much blessed um, you know, to just, just receive his love, to, to, to receive this, his grace, his mercy. He is so merciful. And all that we deserve, you know, all the punishment and damnation that we deserve, just through his son, Yahushua, which died for our sins, risen on the third day, and whosoever believes will not perish, but is promised eternal life. And as we continue to be filled with his Ruach HaKadosh, and we continue to be led by the law of the Spirit and guarding his ways, then we can endure to the end. Because all things with Christ is possible. Um, I mean, all things are possible through Christ, which strengthens us. And as Christ himself, Yahushua said, our Messiah, he said that with Yah, all things are possible. You know, so I don't look at anything as being impossible for our Elohim. And I feel like one of the biggest issues out of any believer um, that has doubt is they limit our Elohim. They limit Yah. You know, and I feel like I think that's one of the biggest mistakes. I mean, we read scripture, we understand scripture, and we know scripture. We see what's happening in the Old Testament. We see the proof. Like, so we know and have the information of Yah's sovereignty and his power and what he's done just to split the Red Sea and the, the lengths that he'll go, you know, just the, the flooding the earth or eradicating all of humanity and existence and just all the things that he's done in Abraham's life and Isaac and Jacob and the line is all the way down and trickled down all the way to our day and age today in the land of our captivity where we're waking up and seeing what Yah's doing supernaturally in his chosen people. According to the flesh, of course, meaning the Israelites, uh, the ones that are promised to be gathered into the land in the time of the end, after the Gentiles are trodden the land down, um, after the great tribulation and his chosen people will be gathered during that time, I believe, into the land. Um, but, you know, forget what I believe theologically or anything like that. You know, I just, I just really want to just... You know, come to you just to tell you once again, like, I didn't know what I was going to say, but, you know, now I know what I'm going to say because I was just talking. Don't limit Yah. Don't limit our Elohim. Don't limit God. Don't limit him. The lengths that he went for you just to save you, just to bring you out. Like, and you got to think of the likelihood of your life right now. It is more likely that you will be struck by lightning. It is more likely that you will hit the lottery. It is more likely that you will become a quadrillionaire. It is more likely of all those things than you to exist. The likelihood of you existing is the most least likely probable thing out of everything. All the gametes, meaning the sperm, and all of those is to get into that egg. And then your, and then your probability of even existing because some people you know have dead eggs some people go through menopause some people get abortions you know so 
we don't know what you know what I'm saying just to, just just to think of that like just for you to exist today like you could have died in your sleep you could have some people die in their sleep some people die of cancer some people die of like diabetic issues and heart issues and failure and and some people die from unnatural causes like car accidents and plane crashes and and, and you know and just work accidents and just freak accidents that happen out of just some crazy stuff that just you know, stuff happens. People are murdered. You know, so how you you look at all that for you to exist today is a miracle in itself. You are a walking miracle. Just for you to exist today is enough of what Yah and how far Yah will go. Just for you to be alive right now to hear this message before your life ends. That Yahushua has died for your sins and on the third day he has risen from the grave. He is the son of our Elohim. He is the son of God. Jesus as they call him. He is the son of God. He is the son of Yahuwah. He is the son of our creator. He is the son. And those that believe in the son. Which is the truth, the way, and the life. And there's no way to the father except through him. If you believe in him. If you believe that he has died and risen. Literally it's that simple. Just to believe in that is your door, your foot in the door. But you got to go, you got to walk in. You know, it's walking out this walk of righteousness. It's about guarding Yah's ways by the Rock HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. As we walk in the Spirit, we are to guard His ways by the Spirit. So it's our dependency on our Father, which leads us into guarding His law, statutes, and commandments. It's by His Spirit that enables us to do what He has commanded us to do. And it's in our study of the scriptures as well to get to know his law, statutes, and commandments. To get to know the ways to please the Father. To get to know what pleases him. You know, if we love the Father, we'll keep his commandments. As Yahushua said, just as I has kept my Father's commandments. You know, so. And ultimately, we limit Yah on that. We say we can't do it. We can't this. We can't. We always say we can't do something. When with him, we can do all things. All things are possible through Christ which strengthens us. We got to think of the Mashiach that strengthens us to do exactly what the Father is doing. And if Yahushua, down to a T, guarded Yah's law, statutes, and commandments, obedient to the point of death, and he's with us and he's overcome this world, then we are to do the same thing. And we can do that by the Ruach HaKadosh, which has been gifted to us. As Yahushua says, he says, I cannot send the helper down unless I ascend and be with the Father. And then the Father will send that down in my name. I think I paraphrased that at the end, but you know what I mean. Ultimately, we limit Yah. We have ideas, you know, and just great ideas. Oh, but that's not possible. How do we look at our circumstances? Be like, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough resource. I don't have. How about you take a step in faith and step forward into something to do something? And then maybe he can work because without faith, it's impossible to please Yah. You want to know why Yahushua didn't do that many um, miracles in his home city, in his hometown, in his home country? It is not his home country, but his hometown is his. It's just, where his like his home where it's a no prophet has no love in his hometown I'm paraphrasing that as well it was the lack of faith the lack of faith is the reason why he didn't do that many miracles home this is why the Gentiles came up to him just rushing him like oh man can you do this and the one centurion soldier he said if I command people to tell him to go and this and that and that and this he was like a general so he could command people to go forth and go forth and he's telling you if I could command people to do that and you can command this to you can command you could just say it with your words and you will heal my child and he said your faith is made whole. just if you if you read the scripture you, he said your faith has made you whole a woman just by touching the hem of his garment with faith that she can be healed by the issue of blood just just faith to touch the hem of his garment and he's been and she's been healed just the hem of faith the size of a mustard seed what what happens if that faith grows you gotta have faith in our elohim and i'm telling you if you have that faith let's believe 
that he will work in your situation. He will work in your behalf. And I'm a walking testimony of that. So I'm just telling you something that I've been through, that I've walked out. And some things I will say that I struggle with even recently. And I, and I thank you, Hua, that he's showing me the light. He's showing me the way. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. He's so good. You know, so don't limit y'all, you know, in your situation. Sometimes we can look at the circumstances and say, man, you know, you praying for something, believing in him for something. And just like, man, that ain't going to never happen, man. That's answers. You know, I, I was feeling the same way about some things. And I thought some things would happen. And then now I don't know if some things are going to happen. But even if some things don't happen right now, I trust in his timing. I trust in his sovereignty. I know that his hand is with me. I feel it. I feel his grace. I feel his Holy Spirit, the Rock HaKadosh. I feel his power in my life working, manifested all around me. I feel him. I feel the angels just around me, surrounding me. I feel his divine protection from things that I that I, that I probably that probably would have overtaken me, that probably would have destroyed me, that would have destroyed my faith, that would have destroyed my walk with him, would have destroyed me completely and entirely. But I feel his hand protecting me. I feel his hand on me. Even when I turned away, even when I fell away, even when I backslid, even when I, you know, I, I could tell that he's working with me and he's working in me. And he's even using my mistakes. He's using my wrong decisions. He's using my sin. He's using it all for a greater purpose. I wouldn't be delivered from sin if I didn't sin. <laughs> so I got to give him the glory for delivering me from sin, from loosening those chains, from breaking those soul ties, from breaking that bondage that I was in. I can't limit him, all that he's done in my life. I remember asking him for my children and like saying, y'all, please bring me my children. This is before I had custody of my children. Two months later, I get my children so custody. I had them for almost five years now, or four years. Yeah, I had custody of my children for almost four years now. In January, it make four years of having sole custody of my children. Man. They sleep right now. I think one of them probably made some noise, so I don't know. Probably about to go to the bathroom. But, um, don't limit our Elohim, man. Don't limit him. Man, he's sovereign. He's all powerful, omnipresent, omnipotent. Like he has the power to do whatever he wants. What is his will for our life? We have to be obedient to the call. We have to be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Hakadosh. We have to be obedient to that unction. We have to be obedient to that small, still voice. And if we can't hear that small, still voice, that means we're out of alignment with him if we can't hear that small, still voice. If we don't have an unction of the Holy Spirit, the Rock HaKadosh, if we don't have conviction when we sin, if we don't, you know, if we're not moved to pray, if we're not moved to praise and worship him in our trials, if we're not moved to get into his word, to dive into his word, not for information, but just, just to get closer communion with him, you know, if the word was Yah and the word was with Yah, we could go back to the word was Yah. So if the word was Yah, and if the word is Yah, then we get into the word to know Yah more. But we, 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 we know him more through experiences as well. We know him more through the experiences that we have with him. We know him more through our private time, our, 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 our time with him in this secret place, you know. So it's really about just getting into the presence of Yah and, and praying to him. And not just praying to him, but praising him and worshiping him. And not just praising, worshiping, and praying to him like some formal, like prayer. We don't have to be so formal with him. We can talk to him about our issues, talk to him about our problems. And I'm going to say this one thing as well, because a lot of believers do it, and I've done it too, is question Yah. So first thing we got to stop doing is limiting him. Next thing we got to stop doing, we got to stop questioning our Elohim. We got to stop questioning him because he already knows everything before anything existed. So if he knew our history and our, like, I mean... <laughs> Of course, our history, because history is before us. But if he knows our future and our end, our expected end, if he knows that before the foundations of this world and before the foundations of everything that was created, if Yah in his sovereignty already knows everything, then why are we questioning him? Why are we questioning him? 
it's like parents that believe in Christmas. I don't believe in Christmas, by the way, but this is a good principle to bring up. Parents got their children Christmas presents. You know, the children, like, it's like a prayer. They prayed for, you know, prayed for a thing. And, you know, and, you know, so it's like asking the parents for the Christmas present. Or maybe a parent might just, you know, what do y'all want for Christmas? And, you know, the children might, you know, like, you know, be impatient because Christmas didn't come. But Christmas is, we know when Christmas is, so this is kind of like not a good example but it is a good example in essence where it's like okay what did I get for Christmas and it's like you know what you asked your parents for for Christmas and now you're waiting for that now if you have faith that your parents will deliver on what you asked for then and that means that by Christmas you're going to get that it's just different when walking with Yah because we do pray for things, but we have to pray according to his will. A general thing that most people will pray for is a husband or a wife. So you pray for a husband or wife, and then you get impatient. And then you start doing things in your own power. You start to try to look at the Christmas. You try to find, look for the Christmas presents. And once you find the Christmas presents and you rip it open and you realize, wow, it is what I wanted. Some people have that moment where it's like, oh, this is what I wanted. Now, how does it feel that you you rushed into opening that Christmas present instead of waiting until Christmas to receive that present? And that's that's how it could be, you know. Sometimes we can kind of force something that Yah has done for us <laughs> already. Answered prayer is just not time yet. And we sitting here trying to open the present... <laughs> Before it's expected time, you know, and sometimes, you know, that 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 kind of ruins the surprise. I mean, it's a surprise, but I believe it'd be more surprise if you were patient with Yah in that. And I feel like sometimes, just in the waiting process, we're like, why, you know? I, so going back to the point that I was making, you know, like, so we can push the Christmas thing aside. That was kind of like an extra principle that I added onto that, but. It's like while we're in the middle of our waiting seasons or our, our season being patient with Yah, it's like, why? Because it's like you prayed for that thing and now Yah is preparing you. <laughs> so now you prayed for something. He's utilizing circumstances, spiritual attacks, and even attacks within yourself and in your mind and attacks on your faith, which Yah isn't attacking your faith. The enemy is. But Yah is using the enemy to refine you, to prepare you for what you prayed for. You can't just pray for a husband or wife and then just expect a husband or wife to come in your life. But you're not even prepared to be a husband or wife. So I'm not to learn. You know. You can't pray for that. You know, some people pray for like, uh, like to be used by Yah. So then he'll put you through circumstances and he knows you have gifts already. So he puts you through circumstances to challenge your faith, to, to, to build you up, to prepare you to be used for the calling that he has for you. You know, so and sometimes we be in the circumstances and we're like, why am I here? Why is this happening? God, why you got to do this? Why is this? Why is that? And we keep on questioning him. That's not faith. Why do you think the children of Israel died in the, in the wilderness, died in the desert? Why did they die? Because they was questioning Yah. And he's a holy Elohim. He don't play. So, first and foremost, what did I say at first? Stop limiting Yah. Stop questioning Yah. So stop limiting him. Stop questioning him. And start praising him. That's the third thing. That's the last thing I'm going to say. There's many things that we can add into this. But third. So stop limiting him. Stop questioning him. And start praising him. Even when the outcome you want don't happen fast enough. Or it don't happen at all. It doesn't mean it ain't never going to happen. It just ain't happening right now. You know, sometimes the undesirable things may happen. It says, as the scripture says, as Paul even mentions and alludes to, 
He says, man, you rejoice when these fiery trials come upon you. When tribulation come upon you and the calamity comes in your life, that's just a sign showing that you are suffering with Mashiach. That doesn't mean that we force suffering on our lives. Some people, like, really put, like, they, they'll purposely put themselves in a way of suffering just to, for the sake of suffering. No, you suffer because you're on the right path. And when that happens, you rejoice in that. You praise Yah in that. We got to stop complaining and start praising more. And I bet, best believe, like, when you start to praise Yah in the midst of your trials, that's when breakthrough is going to happen. And all hell going to break loose and it's going to try to come at you and the gates of hell will try to prevail, but it will not prevail against his church, against his ecclesia, against his people that he's chosen, his remnant, his kodashim, kodash, his set apart ones. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But he was set a table. A table. It's going to be a table set in the midst of your enemies. And you get to sit back. <laughs> you get to sit back and, and, and feast in front of your enemies. In the midst of your enemies. A thousand to your left. Ten thousand to your right thousand to you however the number is nothing will touch you but you're in the shadow of the most high once you're praising him and worship him and giving him the glory honor and praise and acknowledging him in it and trust and believe trust and believe trust and believe he's going to work in your life if you follow those three things, listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you right now. Listen. Listen one more time. I'm going to tell you. And I'm not just telling you this for you. I'm telling you this for me because I need this word. I came in here not knowing what I was going to say. I came here talking to myself. And I just hope that you can pick up what I'm saying. I'm literally looking at myself because this is a selfie cam on my cell phone. So I want to tell you this one more time. Don't limit Yah. Don't limit him. He can do whatever he want. I'm not trying to preach no prosperity gospel, but if it's in his will for you to become a millionaire, because there's some great purpose behind you becoming a millionaire, he will allow you to be a millionaire. You know, I'm not going to tell you what I'm believing y'all for, <laughs> you know, but there's some things, you know, and I just hope that you can continue to see what he's doing, you know, because he's doing some mighty things in my life. And I believe many people on the outside looking in can clearly see some people can't, you know. Well, one, don't limit y'all. Two, uh, what was the second one? Don't question y'all. So don't limit him and then don't question him. I dare one of my children to try to question me about some stuff and continue to question me and question me about the same thing over and I'm like, if you don't stop asking me, <laughs> patience, don't question him. Go do it, endure. Ain't that what Christ said? Ain't that what the Mashiach said? Ain't that what our Messiah said? He said, endure to the end, you'll be saved. We gotta endure. Long suffering, that's the fruit of the spirit. Patience is the fruit of the spirit. Be patient with y'all. Peace, that's the fruit of the spirit. Peace. Philippians 4, 6, 7, and 8, you know, it's just, it's just be anxious for nothing but prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known, and the peace that surpasses all understanding will befall you. And I know I'm paraphrasing some words and wording and things like that. But in principle, peace that surpasses all understanding will overtake you. If you put your faith in him. And third thing, praise him in the midst of your trials, battles, tribulation. You don't always have to have good things happening to you to praise him. And I'm telling you, like, just me, just in the midst of whatever I'm experiencing right now, 
I am blessed. I've been praising y'all, man. I've been praising him. And just, you know, we go through moments. We have moments, man. It get tough, man. It gets wearisome. It starts dragging you and life try to beat you up and beat you down to you black and blue and the worst that can just happen can happen and things will arise and things will it is just like man i don't understand but still even in the, the misunderstandings you know just gotta praise him and worship him i remember earlier i just picked up my guitar and i just started to just play and i played my guitar in, in a long time i've been so discouraged been so discouraged just And I've been praising him, and let me tell you, he's been lifting some yokes off of my mind. He's been freeing me from some bondages that I've been in. He's been healing me from some stuff that I've, I've, I've realized. And I mean supernaturally, and I mean exponentially. These things are happening so fast that it's scary, but I'm telling you that he gets the glory. So things are happening very fast, and it's so fast that it's scary. They're not scary the way where I'm like... <laughs> Where I'm like, like, like scared. I'm just saying that, yeah, man. Just all the years, all the years, all the years of being undone in a week. One week have undone years of damage that the enemy has done. One week. He's real. You can say whatever you want. God isn't real. God isn't is. Uh, most people, I mean, just, atheists are a smaller group of people. Everybody believes there's a higher something, and he's working in your life. And he's doing things, and he's leading you. And I just hope. I know this is a pretty long video. I hope that you hear hear something that I just said in this thing, man. Because he really working, man. He's real, man. You know, so one more time, those three things, man. Don't limit y'all. Don't limit our Elohim. Don't limit God. Two, you know, don't question him. And number three, praise him in the midst of it all. And fourth and last thing that I mentioned, believe in his son and you will be saved. And that's all I have to say, but thank you for listening and may y'all bless you. I hope this message has blessed you. Bless you, bless your loved ones, bless all those that you've been praying for. You know, I know we have lots of unsaved friends, family, and loved ones, you know, so. You know, I'm, I'm in the gap with you. You know, I've, I've been praying for a lot of the body that I don't even know abroad. The, the corporate body all across the world, the ecclesia. You know, so all those, just know that I'm in the gap praying with you. And in and, and, and intercession just on your behalf. You know, just, just for you. You know, just as I pray for others, I'm just, I, gener I usually generally pray for the body at large. And that, you know, you just... You know, bless them, you know, answer their prayers according to, you know, your will, Heavenly Father. And continue to get, just give them strength because it ain't easy for you. I know it ain't easy for you. If you're truly walking and living a set-apart life, if you're truly walking down a narrow path, it ain't easy for you. I know it ain't because I'm telling you, I've been through hell and back. And I'm telling you that I'm blessed because of it. Not because I went through hell and back, but I'm blessed because I'm walking a narrow path. Some successes might not come quicker than like somebody that's walking in wickedness. But let me tell you, when you receive whatever he he desires for you, it's going to be more worthwhile. Yah wants to bless you. It's just, are you willing to walk with him? Are you willing to be obedient to the unction of the Ruach HaKadosh's Holy Spirit? Are you willing to allow the word to be the authority in your life? Are you, are you it's just trust and believe, man. When you get into that word, the word which was with Yah, the word that was Yah, the word that was Yah. If you get into that word, you're going to know Yah. 
study to show yourself approved. You don't have to be no big theologian. You don't have to be no Bible scholar. Just just get to know him just through that revelation of the word. And be led of the Ruach HaKadosh in that. And once again, y'all bless you, man. Y'all bless you. I thank you for watching this. Woo-woo.